Let's do a brief review for the three components to run a program. Uh, first is CPU. CPU uh, is an integrated circuit. Um, it's shown in this picture. It's highly uh, integrated, but it's the size is very small. And it, uh, we can see uh, a lot of metal blocks. This constitutes the large scale integrated security. And this is the uh, CPU is the brain for a computer responsible for processing data and performing the calculations. Moving on, let's discuss the um, RAM and hard disk to storage devices. Both memory and hard drives are responsible for storing the data, but they have significant differences in how they uh, store and retrieve data. Firstly, uh, the RAM is an important uh, um, temporary store data. This means that once the computer is shut down or power off, all data stored in RAM is erased. For the hard drive, it's used for a permanent or a relative permanent. It's like long-term uh, data storage or installed uh, software documents and the source code are saved on the hard drive. Since RAM only temporary uh, store data, imagine uh, what would happen if all data and the programs are stored in RAM and the computer shut down, everything will get lost, right? Therefore, all our programs and data are installed on the hard drive. RAM is used only for temporary uh, uh, use when needed. So another crucial aspect uh, is speed. For memory, uh, it reads data much faster than the hard drive. The reason is that RAM directly retrieves data from its chips, while a hard drive requires uh, spinning uh, disks and head movement to read the data, making it much uh, slower. So in terms of space, um, the RAM has much less capacity compared to the hard drives. While the RAM uh, might, might have sizes like 4 GB, 8 GB, or um, 16 GB, the hard drives are typically measured in uh, terabytes. TB with one TB equals to 1,024 1, GB. Hence, the hard drive usually have a capacity of one TB, two TB or more, making them significantly larger in space compared to RAM. So to sum up, the CPU works, the memory temporary uh, stores data, but with high speed and uh, the hard disk permanently store data although with slower speed. This represents the characteristics of the three major hardware components in a um, computer. So uh, this um, look at some practice questions and answers for this part. First question is which hardware device in the computer is responsible for executing program. Yes, the CPU, the brain. Second question, is the speed of memory or RAM faster of the speed of the hard disk? Uh, faster, of course, the memory. Third question, are our programs installed in memory or on our hard disk? Hard disk, and uh, just uh, in case, the memory would get lost when it's shut down in RAM. Four question, uh, Lily bought a memory module with 500 GB of space. Is this uh, detriment correct? No, 
the memory uh, modules typically comes in size like 4 GB, 8 GB, and 60 GB or 32 GB or um, uh, 100, uh, uh, 64, 128 GB, uh, something like this. And question five, is it true that all data in memory is lost when the computer is shut down? Yes, because the memory um, uh, stores only in the short term or temporary um, data. So if it's shut down of the computer, the data will get lost. Next, uh, let me introduce the uh, uh, principle um, behind the program execution. As we have mentioned before, uh, the computer hardware only know machine languages, like they're the ones, they're the ones, the binary languages. They don't know the uh, human languages. And for us, for the human to interact with computers, we need a, a interpreter uh, to help us to translate the language between the hardware and us. So the CPU uh, is helping uh, to uh, give a command uh, to download the ex uh, program or APPs to be execute, executed from the hard disk to RAM. Uh, because the hard disk uh, is uh, very large, the size and uh, the um, storage is large and it can store the programs um, uh, like we download a uh, Discord or Instagram or any um, app like games or um, or their uh, social media uh, apps. So we store it. Once we want to uh, use it, the CPU will um, make um, inst instruction or commands to have the app to into the RAM to get executing uh, because the RAM is small, but it can um, act very fast. The speed is very fast, so it can interact directly with the CPU. So uh, this is how the uh, program execution uh, works. So um, like, like here, before a program runs, it's stored on the hard disk. When we want to run the program, the operating system first instructs the CPU to copy the program into the memory. Then the CPU can execute the program code in memory. And to execute a program, it must uh, first uh, be, down, uh, be loaded into the memory. So this is how the uh, program execution works. Uh, for Python program, it's uh, very similar. Uh, the operating system first instructs the uh, CPU to copy the Python interpreter program into the memory. Then the uh, Python interpreter following the syntax rule translate the code from the Python program from uh, top to bottom, line, to line by line, step by step. And the CPU is uh, responsible for executing the translated code. So we can uh, read and uh, we can um, have uh, interact with the Python. Next, we can check about um, the Python's interpreter size uh, by uh, the following terminal commands. We can uh, turn on the Ubuntu and uh, move the nodes to the left. And in Ubuntu, we can use the uh, interpreter program in the share called the Python 3. And it's asking us to uh, to code here. We can use Control and D uh, to exit and uh, to check the location of the interpreter of Python three. We can use which command? Which Python three? We can know uh, it's under the user directory and uh, on the um, bin directory and it's also Python 3. Next, to view the size of the Python file, this type ls, 
hyphen lh user bin and python3 and we can see um, the size is 10 uh, bit which is very small and uh, uh, this uh, is um, get go, get a direction to Python 3.11 version, which is a soft link, a symbolic link. That's why it's very small. And uh, if we, we want to check the Python 3.11 size, we can use uh, this command ls hyphen lh and Python 3.11. We can see the size is uh, six point five uh, megabytes, which is also very small um, to be uploaded to the uh, RAM for the memory to uh, do the execution work. So it's very small, and the purpose of creating um, the symbolic link is to make it convenient without having to remember which specific version. Um, of the interpreter is because we may update it in the future to 3.12, uh, 13, 14, or uh, in the future Python 4, uh, we don't need to remember about the specific version, so it's very convenient. Let's go back to the notes um, to learn the, uh, the function of the programs. The programs are used to process data um, for example, about the news content comments uh, provided uh, by the software uh, way of news, they are all data and the product information, delivery information provided by the e-commerce software are data and the sports app uh, data are also provided by soft uh, sports software. Uh, in addition, the map information, location information, vehicle information provided by map software are all data. So the programs are dealing uh, with uh, different kinds of data like the social media, messenger, profile information, are uh, also data. Um, and then let me pro um, this, let us to do an access of a uh, Discord program to learn more about the function of the program. Uh, I believe most of the uh, students are very familiar yeah, with this code, right? And the Discord program, when we download it, uh, it so we, we are downloaded it to um, a laptop or PC or our cell phone, smartphone or our tablet. After we download it and the program is stored, on the hard disk before running. If we don't use it, uh, we first download and it will uh, download to um, hard disk. After running the dis uh, Discord program, uh, will be loaded into memory, just like the Python. First, uh, the abilities are here, then go to memory when we use it. And this learn the login process of the Discord app. Uh, first, if we um, type in after we it's loaded in the memory, if we uh, type in the uh, username and then the password, the Discord app will read our uh, username and password and send the users. Uh, username and password to the Discord complete server. If our own uh, web uh, service is connected very, way, very well and without any problem, then it will be sent to server and uh, wait for the server to confirm the user's information. We have three questions to help us understand the process. Question one, before the Discord a program sends the user's username and password to Discord to the server. Does it need to store the user's uh, username and uh, the password to uh, Discord somewhere? The answer is yes. Uh, 
otherwise the Discord program wouldn't know what content to send to the server first, and it would didn't know um, about uh, what to send. Second is about uh, if it uh, uh, the server's information authentication come back, so we need to um, do the authentication to match the username and password. Otherwise, we don't have something to match, right? And to compare. Question two, where does the Discord program store the username and password? Uh, answer is it stored them in memory because the uh, Discord program itself is currently executing in memory from the Discord. So it's in the memory right now. And question three, so how does the, does the uh, Discord program save the user's username and password? The answer is it allocates separately uh, in uh, the memory space for the username and password. And uh, these two memory space are managed by the Discord program until it finishes the execution. And uh, uh, no other program is allowed to use these two memory space while Discord is there in use. An alias is used to mark the uh, location of the user name and password in memory, like next, uh, these two small boxes are uh, marked as alias. So actually they are very, very small part in a uh, memory. And uh, um, I draw it bigger to make it more uh, visualized. So these two parts are to store for the uh, information in memory. And within the Discord program, the space allocated in memory for the username and password is called a variable. In summary, when a program runs, it has a, a dedicated space in memory for uh, storing the data. And to store a data, the program allocates memory space and assigns variable to it. Variables are used to save data within the program. And uh, um, now that we have uh, uh, clarified this, this remember that the primary purpose of a program is to um, process the data. And uh, the data it processes is stored in the uh, variables. In a nutshell, variables are space allocated with a program to store a data. As for now, about how to use variables in our program development, don't worry, we will discover in the uh, next section. Programs are designed to process the data and the variables are used to store data. After understanding this concept, this proceeds to learn the basics usage of variables. In the upcoming section, we will first learn how to define a variable and its basic usage. Then I will introduce what type of data can be stored. Lastly, we will learn how to give the variable meaningful names when developing the programs. Now, Let's start by understanding how to define the uh, variables. Defining a variable in Python is very straightforward. We just need to follow uh, this syntax. If we want to use a variable to store data, we start by writing the variable name fo followed by a equal sign. And then the value we want to store in the variable on the right side um, of the equal sign once the variable is uh, defined, we can use it directly. Now, let's practice using the interactive program IPython3. Uh, first, we will demonstrate how to define a variable. Uh, in Python, defining a variable uh, is as simple as this code. Uh, left side is variable name equals to the value. Um, let's say uh, in IPython3, if we want to define a variable name called uh, Discord uh, username to store the uh, Discord is username. And for, and for example, the, the username is Lily. 
after executing this statement, a valuable called uh, discard username will be created in memory and it will contain the value of Lily. To confirm the content of this variable, we can simply type a uh, Discord username in the interactive share because it's an, uh, in an interactive environment. Then uh, let's uh, do the practice from Ubuntu. And first, uh, we have started uh, IPython 3. And uh, type Discord. Username. Equals to Lily. Then um, we can type if we want to output the uh, contents stored in the Discord username. We can just uh, uh, type Discord username. There will be a hint. Um, Discord username. And we can get the output Lily. So this is very straightforward. Um, it's also uh, the same uh, for Discord password. If we want to define a variable name, um, name the Discord password in the memory, and we want to give a value, uh, like for the password, we say one, two, three, four. And if we, if we want to Discord password, equals to in the double quotes it's a string uh, one two three four then discord password if we type this and press enter we will get one two three four so um, in the active uh, model we can directly enter the variable name to view uh, its content without leading uh, the uh, print function However, if we uh, use the PyCharm, um, first we can go to the PyCharm and in the project of uh, the other one, um, Python basic is this right click and uh, create a little Python file named uh, um, Python. The other one, variable uh, basics make them a uh, lower case then uh, we can copy the code here first uh, um, to um, give a comment about uh, define the discord username variable and uh, in a night two we have um, defined a username name the discord username and uh, equals to the value Lily second step is to define the discord uh, password variable uh, to save time, I just uh, copy paste the code here in nine four and five. We define the Discord uh, password, and if we right click and run uh, this uh, Python the other one variable dot pi, we can say uh, we didn't have any results here. So to print uh, to uh, uh, print the values in the console parallel, we need to use a uh, uh, print keyword use a print function so this copy the um the comments and uh, to the uh, python code array and uh, uh, this also use a print function to print the discord uh, username and uh, to print the discord password this right click and run 
the Python Z1 variable um, dot pi again, we can see the results has been printed here. Um, we can also change the color uh, of the results. Let's do uh, go to PyCharm setting and uh, go to editor console color scheme console of font. Um, first, this change it to light. So, so uh, the whole um, system will be changed to light. It's easy for us to uh, see, right? Next, let's work on an example of buying cherry um, in supermarket. And uh, first, let's take a look at the requirements. Um, so we are going to the supermarket to buy cherry. They are sold at 5.5 .5, uh, per pound. And we want to buy 7.5 pound of cherry. Uh, please calculate the payment amount. So for the code, uh, this first, um, try to add a new um, Python file. Before uh, we add the new Python file, how about this uh, change the um, names of uh, all the Pythons first about comments. Let's do refactory if we want to rename. Uh, so we can uh, move the comments in front. So we know it's comments. This is a first practice refactory. It will uh, change the comment string uh, reference and everything for um, comments. Second, let me uh, change rename again. And uh, a variable basics move to the front too. And uh, rename it is define uh, discord, define name, define name, um, or define variable username or password. We can just refactory. Then uh, this add a, a new Python file, name it variable. And this is our second practice, level two, and the cherry practice. So first, this defines a variable uh, for the uh, cherry price. Um, give the comments and uh, price is a uh, we named the price a variable and give a value five point five. And the second step is to define the uh, purchase weight. Then this define a variable named weight. And uh, this give a value 7.5 pounds. Now we can calculate the amount. Let's name it uh, payment. and uh, it, which is equals to price. If I type price, it will give uh, us a hint, right? Price and uh, uh, times weight, then we can get the uh, payment. Now to, um, if, if we right click, is we have showed in the uh, first uh, define um, example, we cannot get the um, result uh, from the console, it's empty. But if we try to um, run, uh, you try to you, you add the print function, this print payment, print, we will choose the second one, payment. Uh, if I type P, it will give me a hint. So we can use the auto uh, compilation payment, right click, run. And we can get uh, the payment is 41.25, right? And uh, uh, this to another practice, if we can uh, get a, a $5 discount, uh, please calculate the payment again. 
Before that, uh, how about this uh, practice of the debug? If we, we click the uh, breakpoint uh, by between nine two and the price, we will get a red uh, breakpoint. And if we um, click the debug icon, icon here or right click to debug either way, then uh, we will uh, start to uh, debugging. We will show the debug and uh, uh, we can step into step over for uh, first step. And we can see uh, there's a float. We can see on uh, in the curly bracket, there's a, a float information, right? It sh also shows a uh, price is uh, 5.5. And uh, with a float, the same information. Uh, float means uh, our value is uh, the data type is float type. And then uh, that means I uh, save again. We will go to line eight. And uh, we can see uh, the weight of uh, also shows here as 7.5, right? The same information. And this uh, continue to step over. And then we can get the payment forty one um twenty five to get uh the uh, the debugging or execution um and information one by one and uh, uh, this is a uh, then th let's continue to um do the step over then we will create the console um uh, as a box uh, the page so we can uh, get the result of the QR calculation for the payment and print the uh, result in the console um, uh, array. Let's go back to our um, question for practice two. So we are going to uh, apply a $5 discount and calculate the payment again. Um, the, so let me go back to apply a $5 discount for step four. And the payment will be uh, like this. So payment will uh, deduct by $5, right? So our payment, if I type P and I will get a hint of our payment and uh, we chose it and get auto completion to uh, get the whole payment. So payment um, plus uh, uh, minus by five, uh, then we apply our $5 um, discount. Later we this print again and uh, uh, right click or to run or just uh, type the uh, triangle here. We can see we get uh, 35.25. Uh, this uh, click a break point in line five and do the uh, debug to see the uh, data types for uh, each assigned value. So uh, if we uh, click the um, debug icon and this step over, uh, because um, the first uh, uh, step over was uh, jumped from 9.5 and 9.8, we can see the price has been assigned 5.5 with a um, data type of float and the weight is also assigned at 7.5 with a um, data type of float. This continue uh, to step uh, over, it will jump to um the nine uh eleven, and we get the um we have a uh, get a a number of the payment, but it uh, we get a number of of payment in nine eight. It shows forty one um point twenty five. And let's go to uh, the step over uh, to apply the discount where you can see uh, it's changed to 36.25. Um, One more step over, then we will get our result of 60.25. Uh, 
36.25. So uh, in this uh, practice, we have learned about how to use the variables to perform the uh, calculations. Uh, we calculated the total cost of buying a cherry based on the weight and uh, the price. And uh, next, let me uh, provide two additional tips related to Python. We can see uh, I have opened a uh, three pi fire here. And if I want to uh, turn off these two um, pi fire, we can uh, right click and close other tabs. We'll close all tabs, we'll close tabs to the left. Let me uh, try to close tabs uh, to the left. Then all the tabs are uh, gone. So in the future, if we have like 50 or 100 uh, um, pi or uh, fires uh, in the in the head bar, then we can right click and close all tabs or choose to close uh, other um, other uh, pi fires or other txt files in the future or even pictures or images. And next, uh, this um ch uh, check some questions and answers so uh, about the, the um, cherry buying um example first question is uh in the above code in the in this code let me uh, move the console bar a little bit further okay in the code, how many variables are defined in total? We can know we have defined by ourselves about price, weight, and payment. So three in total. Second question, is payment equals to payment uh, minus five defining a new variable or using a variable? Uh, no, it's using a variable that was defined earlier. The variables names are only defined the first time uh, they appear when a variable name appears again. It's not defining a new variable. It's directly using a previous defined variable. Uh, this uh, try to def uh, back again. And we can see if we step over uh, to the payment. So this is the first time to uh, define a variable here. If we jump to uh, 11, uh, line 11 of about the minus five and step over again, we can see we didn't have a defined a new variable here. It's show only the same at nine five to change the amount uh, from uh, 41.25 um, to 60, um, 36 to, uh, point 25. So it's the same var variable for the payment. We haven't defined a new variable. Question three, can we change the value stored in your previous defined variable during the uh, program? Uh, yes, we can. Uh, the value stored in your variable, uh, of course, can be changed. As we can see, uh, we change the uh, from, let me redo. And uh, step over again. We can see uh, first uh, is 41.25. If step into a game, we can change the variable, right? So we can change uh, the uh, value stored in the variable. Next, let's know about the variable type is we have um, showed about the, the data type of price, weight, and payment before the uh, data type here are float. So uh, in Python, when we define a variable, we use an assignment. A statement on the left side of uh, equal sign, the equal sign, we write the uh, variable name and the right side we specify the data we want to store in the variable. However, in Python, different data usually correspond to different uh, types. So what are the data types? And uh, what are the most uh, commonly used uh, and fundamental data types in Python? This start with um, a practice exercise to help our, um, the students to understand the data type and uh, get uh, familiar with the most uh, commonly used data types in Python. 
For this exercise, we will define several variables to store the personal information uh, for uh, a person named Lily. We will define the variables to store Lily's name, age, gender, uh, height, and weight. And uh, um, let's go to the Paichang and the read name. First, let me uh, name, name uh, um, Python file. Variable basic zero three and uh, um personal fire p fire then this use a block comment here if i type the um let me redo if i type um three times of the um uh, double quote then it will automatically give me another half of the three uh the triple quotes and let me um past the information inside of the um block comments box then we have all the information here about uh, and to define the uh, lady's name and uh, gender, age, and height, and weight. Now, this uh, define lady's name, name equals to lady and age equals to 18 then hat equals to 5.5 .5. before that we have a <clears throat> gender equals to a female and uh, we have Wet a variable and assign the value 153. And the lily and the female, we can see we have um the red curly curly line, which means uh they there are mistakes. If I run, we we will show uh, in the console panel. We can see the name lily. Uh, it's not identified. There's a name name error in nine ten. If we change to string, it did a double uh, quotes. It will change to gray means it's right. Then let me re run. So we will get another error uh, information. Next, let's continue to know the variable types. So in Python, we don't need to specify the types when defining a variable, unlike many other high level uh, languages, which is very convenient to use in Python. And the data type can be categorized as uh, two main types, uh, the numeric type and the non-numeric type. And uh, um, the numeric type can be um, divided in four main types, integer, float, Boolean and complex. And for Boolean types, currently we can choose the true and false types is for false is zero and for true other than zero um, number or characters to uh, represent true. And again, it's important to know that we don't need to specify the types when defining a variable. The uh, Python can automatically help us to enforce the variables type based on the value uh, assigned to it. And uh, next, let's know about uh, uh, the function, another function types. For the type function um, is frequently used in IPython. So in IPython, 
um, let's go to the Ubuntu. So in IPython, um, we don't have a GUI like PyCharm. If in PyCharm, we can know the data type by uh, debugging, uh, step by step debugging. And uh, if we uh, use a Ubuntu, we need to uh, first let me uh, change to uh, I Python three to do the demo in Ubuntu terminal. Control and D, yes, and clear. I Python three. Then we can uh, start to uh, type uh, the first for available name equals, we can uh, define the variable name equals Lily, double quotes. Then we can use the code type name. Then we can see it's a string str. And if we want to know the age, assign a variable age equals to 18. And the true use type to know um the age. So it will be int integer, int yes. And if for the gender is boolean, we make it true. Is a female and to let's check the type of gender. And we can know it's a boolean type, which is short for um boolean b o o l bool. And if we uh, try to know the uh weight, assign the variable to be 100. Uh, um, 35.5 pounds, then we can know the uh, type. Uh, it is case sensitive, so it's lowercase type and weight. So it's float. So we have practice uh, about using uh, IPython, the interactive uh, share to know the uh, four different uh, uh, types for currently a uh, string int, bool, and float. Uh, great. So uh, let's go back uh, to check to define the integer. Um, we can see a note in IPython perform arithmetic uh, operations using the above three variables. And uh, we, we can check if uh, we can set design an integer i equals to 10, i equals to 10. And f equals to 10.5. And b equals to 2. Let's um do the SRAM uh, arithmetic operations. For example, I plus F. Let's do I. Check the type of I plus I plus F. Let's see it's a flow type. So int type plus a flow type uh, equals to flow type. It is about uh, the uh, convention of the data type. So we will talk more about it later. This is just uh, give us a example about practice by uh, the int and float. And uh, next, uh, let's do the uh, string variable uh, practice. In Python, strings can be concatenated using the plus operator or the addition operator. Let's practice this code first. Assign um a first name Lily. First name equals to a string 
Lily. And last name equals to Bemis. And if we um, want to output uh, Lily Bemis, we can plus first name and last name together. How about, I don't want to confuse you. So let me delete the double quotes. So first name, let me do first name plus last name. We can get Lily Bemis, right? So it's a concatenation like um, to put them together plus for strings. And uh, next is string variable can be repeated using um, the uh, double quotes. If times 100, we have practiced it before. Now uh, let's practice again. String, um, a hyphen string times 100. We can get 100 um, headphones. If star times 1,000, we can get 1,000 stars as the restricts um, printed. This uh, practice of uh, uh, first uh, code to use uh, numeric variables and strings and it they can't perform other calculations. So for if we assign first name uh, Lily and uh, assign a integer type x equals to ten, then if we try to concatenate them together, the, we will get some type errors. Let's check. So um, if we have already assigned first name. Lily, and with this assign x equals 10, equals 10, then input x plus first name, we can see uh, there's a typo error in 9, uh, 19, 91, um, unsupported uh, operand type for int and string. So we get this uh, error message showing for us. So we cannot concatenate the numeric uh, variables and the strings together, right? We can do more uh, practice about the uh, string calculation. Uh, for example, uh, like for first name, if we have uh, defined our first name as uh, Lily, right? Or last name, Bemis. Let's do this uh, first name. Um, if we times 10, we can got uh, four, uh, I mean 10 Lily last name. If we um, times 20, so we can the uh, 20 Bemis here. And we can also, because they are string, we have assigned them as string. It's just like the stars or hyphens we assigned to times 100. And uh, um, from here, we can see uh, to do string and uh, intertypes calculation, we get error. How about if we do a Boolean? We have assigned, uh, this just assign here for Boolean for uh, say equals to false. And uh, here, false is not identified, say equals to false. It should be, um, so um, Python is very case sensitive. So it should be capitalized F, say equals to false. So it's, it's right, it's boolean type for C, type C. We can see it's a boolean type. And here, let's go back to the first uh, calculation between numeric, numeric variables. Um, 
if a variable is of type four in calculations, during calculations, two corresponds to one and false corresponds to zero. So the value for a bool right now is zero. And if I use a int, int i equals to 10, i plus two c will equals to 10, right? Because it's false. But we have assigned b equals to true. So i plus to b it will be 11. Great. And if we, our Boolean type uh, try to plus our last name or first name, First name plus our Boolean type C, we will get a type error again, right? Uh, it says um, concatenated string, not a bool, so we cannot do uh, the calculation. And if we want to add I plus F together, We can get 20.5 and uh, um, to add an integer type and a float together, we get a float number. So it, uh, it is, it's about the, um, it's about the uh, data type convention. Number conversion. And we will learn about it convert uh, of data type later. So this concludes uh, the calculation uh, practice between the different data uh, types of, of variables. Next, let's learn about uh, the input of a variable. Input refers to retrieving the information entered by uh, users through the keyboard using the code. For example, uh, if we want to waste your money at the bank from an ATM by entering a password, we need to input something, right? Input our numbers for password. If the password is uh, correct, we can get the money. If it's incorrect, uh, we will get uh, um, error messages. In Python, to get the user input from the keyboard, uh, we need to use the input function, just as the ATM input. And let's go to the uh, Ubuntu to use the IPython 3 to um, practice our code input. Then uh, there will be a hint to us to uh, uh, type input and uh, uh, don't forget about the bracket. And if I press enter with return, the cursor will come to the next line and it shows a blinking and this type something. Uh, the input uh, contents are all string, even I type one, two, three, four. It seems like it, um, it's a integer, but it's a, a string. Let's do more input uh, practice. Input, we can input a name, uh, like, hello, a name, maybe or input hello python then the output will be hello python like a sentence so the uh, input here are string if i uh, input true it will be output as a string also so um let's go back to our notes currently we have learned um three uh, functions for Python. The first is print to output the X to the uh, console. Uh, the second uh, function is type to check the data type of uh, X. And uh, um, so what's function? A function uh, is a pre prepared function um, either write uh, by someone else or code by ourselves. And uh, it can be used directly without worrying about the internal details if the function has been uh, predefined. So we can uh, use it as a tool. And uh, this uh, practice again about the function here, if we want to uh, 
for example, x equals to 10. And uh, if I want to print x, then um, there's no output 44 uh, showing. It's just uh, it's a console showing 10. And the type for x should be integer, right? Let me uh, redo it. Uh, I happen to exit the IPython 3, so uh, let me go to IPython 3 again. Python 3. And uh, let me define the variable x and assign 10 to the variable x to get the type of x and it's int. So these are a uh, review practice for print and uh, type function. Um, so to implement the uh, keyboard input with the input function, uh, we can in Python, we can use the input function to wait for user input from the keyboard. Is uh, we have a user input. I didn't uh, finish or yeah, input. Then uh, we can wait for the cursor here to input the contents we want to uh, input. And anything entered by the user is considered as a string uh, by Python. It's, uh, we have practiced uh, about this input contents. They are all printed as a string, right? And uh, the syntax is as follows input, we can add some prompt because input is like, uh, we don't know what to do. It's with too um, much freedom. So if we want to show a prompt, then we we know what should we do. For example, if I want to uh, input the uh, bank password, please input the password. What then it will show here, right? And the password one, two, three, four, and uh, it will output one, two, three, four. And we can also uh, use a variable name to define the uh, this input and with a prompt. For example, um, we can use a string variable like password. equals to input and uh, inside is a string please input a password and uh, let's make it um more red play then Please input a password. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then, I uh, then if I press return or um press enter, you will see there's uh, no output six, right? Um, because we have defined a variable. So to print the to see the variable uh, value, we need to use print print. Password. Then we will see the uh, password of the input one, two, three, four, five, six has been printed uh, in the console. So um, this is a practice for input. Next, let's do a uh, uh, enhanced uh, uh, cherry portraits practice question um, for the variable input practice. Let's see the requirements. First is about the cashier inputs the price of cherry in uh, dollar per pound and the uh, customers purchase weight in uh, pounds. So we need to um, input the price of a cherry and, uh, and then uh, input the cherry's uh, weight in pound. 
and calculate and up, output the um, payment amount. So first, uh, this uh, practice uh, by PyCharm is go to the PyCharm and uh, let's um, create a Leo fire, a Python fire named uh, variable basic. This are the fourth practice. So it's a cherry uh, enhance. Hans practice and we have create the Python um, file here and step one is to input the cherry practice uh, price and step two is to request uh, uh, for the cherry weight how about step three is calculate the um, amount and uh, okay first uh this define a price of string because the input will be string so we define uh, the price of the cherry um is this input use the input function and uh, and let me just uh, copy the string here the prompt is a prompt um, asking us to uh, enter, we only need one pair of the uh, bracket. So this is for input, not int, input. Enter the cherry price and let me Go to the second step. Add one more space. Define the weight. Request that the cherry um, weight is also like it's change to input to make sense. So it's a weight. We define it as string. STR Excuse me input so enter the cherry weight let's copy here and the next to calculate the amount the payment amount so this print, print the payment payment define it first equals to price of the string and uh, times the weight of string then this print the payment to get the result. Print the payment and right click to run. Uh, we can see uh, first is to enter the cherry price. This input um, with one, two, three, uh, the price uh, we defined with value in our last example it was was 5.5 .5 and uh, input 6.5 pound right and we can see we get an error here type of error um can't multiply sequence by non int of type string so we get the error message here um let me put in front of print and add a comment, we get a type error. Uh, so that's why uh, the strings can't get um, 
uh, times together multiplication. So how to solve this problem? That's uh, the um, concept of type data type convention uh, functions for int plus x, x is a string or other kinds of uh, data type uh, values and we'll use float or for other types of data type to convert into in integer or float. So let's try these two functions here. If we want to uh, change to float, so what uh, what should we do to convert the input of a price, uh, cherry price string into a float number here? We can assign, convert the cherry price to a float. So uh, we can first convert. Second is to convert the cherry weight to a float. Then we can do calculation to either, we can also convert it to int by int x, right? Here, we are going to use the float function. So we can first convert the price. Price, we can define price equals to the float of price string. So we have converted the cherry price string to price in a float format. And the second is to use define weight, a little variable to convert the weight of string to weight. Now we can do uh, the calcu calculation of the payment amount. And let's check again, we run. And it's asking us to enter the uh, cherry price 5.5 uh, and enter the cherry weight 7.5. Um, we can see we need to change the payment. Um, let me move this to here and make this as a comment. So we can know that this, this uh, error type for strings cannot uh, calculate together. So let me re enter payment and change the um, variable multiplication into price times weight. And now we can print the payment, right click, re-enter 5.5 .5 and uh, 7.5 for the weight. Then we can get the uh, payment 41.21. Uh, that's how we uh, practice using the data type convention functions by float. And, and here are two questions. And first, in the this practice, how many variables were defined for the price? Two variables were defined for the price. The first is a, a price string records the user's input as a string. The second is the price, right? Records the commodity price as a numeric uh, float value, right? We have used uh, this tool. And uh, the second question, if we need to input many numbers from console, uh, input here, like input 100 numbers, um, do we need to like every time to uh, define each number with two variables? Is it convenient? No, definitely not. We need to we need to define 200 variables. So how to uh, reduce the work? And uh, then we can try to improve the code structure. Uh, before we um, do the practice uh, two, uh, method two about the improve the structure, let's debug our code here. Let's debug, right click, and uh, this go to the uh, console because it's a debug, we cannot steal the input um, uh, 
prompt. So we are here to enter the Chira Prize 5.5 and press return. And um, before we uh, do the debug, we forget something. We need to um, click the breakpoint, right? Let's redo, um, re debug, stop and rerun. And it will go to the uh, debug and stop at line two with highlight in blue color. Let's go to the console and um, this um, step first is to uh, do step over. Then it will ask to uh, enter the cherry price within the question mark 5.5. And uh, then we can see the price um, dash string has been um, show here with a, a string type. If we go to debug, we can also see the input is a string type for the variable price uh, a dash string. And let's go back to a, a console and step over again. It will ask us to enter the cherry weight, 7.5, and uh, it is jumped to a nine, uh, nine, and uh, we can see in nine five, the weight string is showing 7.5, which is the input. I just uh, typed and with a string um, a type showing here. It's also showing the debugger um, array. And if I continue to um, step over, and it's jump to um, our code at nine twelve, continue to step over, we can uh, see uh, the price has been uh, converted to float um, from the price string. The, so the price type is float. And the weight type is float. So uh, we have finished uh, about the unconvert. Then this step over again, we get the payment price uh, showing 5.1.25, which is a float, which have finished the uh, debugging process. So let's go back to our notes. Um, it's, it has showed like a step-by-step -step about um, a conversion, the uh, convert the string type into float. And uh, we have finished uh, our um, practice of enhanced version. However, it's, as the uh, question asked, it's not convenient. So we can uh, have an improved uh, solution. So let's do uh, this improved solution in um hi chop and let's create a new fire named variable basics underscore zero five cherry improved. So in the this um in this improved um um code this first copy paste our code here and let's see uh how to um improve we can uh, just uh, use a uh, float in front of the input and the prompt so we can uh, improve them these two convert the two code together like a nine nine and the line two define them is price use a float type to come Port. So we have finished uh, this converting from the string into float data type. And let me delete 
this also for wet we can use float to convert it as well so we have merged these two steps into one one line see we have <clears throat> reduced a lot of code right now we i can right click and enter the price 5.5 uh, enter the weight 7.5 we can get the uh, payment 41.25 right so it is reduced a lot of lines of code which is with a lot of improvement if we try to debug click a breakpoint first before debugging then go to the console and uh, step over to enter the price 5.5 and we can see uh, the price that we entered is a float not a, a string again this step over and uh, enter 7.5 uh, we can see the weight here is floated uh, showing the for the weight variable and step over we can uh, per, uh, get the per payment information already but if we want to print out we can step over again and get the result so you may uh, be a little confused about the conversion i will do more practice from ipython 3 um, we can see for this uh, example for improved practice and enhanced practice. For enhanced practice, we have around 20 uh, lines of our code. And for here, we have 10 lines, which reduce around half of the code, which is very convenient. And the advantage is, is to save space by allocating space for only one variable and convenient variable uh, naming, no need to name intermediate variables. The disadvantages of this improvement is about the Python, uh, it's us where the Python beginner learners, uh, we may not know that the two functions can be nested together. They are like a, a nested structure, input and float, uh, which uh, can be a a bit more challenging to understand and read the code. So um, there's also a note, if the input is not a number, the program will encounter an error during the execution too. If I input not a number, uh, improve some words, then it will convert into not float, floating number. Let me rerun and try here. If we type a hello, the price is hello. Then we will see um, during the floating, we have a value error for the not convert to string um, from string to uh, float. So this is an error. And we will talk about this convention later for more details. Before that, let's come back to practice more data type convention. If we go to the um, our uh, I type sensory. This practice um, type, for example, int. Use the int to convert. Inside, we can um, type one, two, three. Then output one, three. And let's check the type for int. One, two, three. We can see, um, I forgot one, one more thing. I've So every time we need to check about the bracket. And let me be, put a pair of bracket here. And uh, we can check the uh, type for int. Uh, string conversion 
into a int type. Also, we can do this int, and inside it, we can type a float number 12, 3, 6, 7, 8, and it, would, it has been uh, converted the float number into 12. And uh, if we check the type, again, it will show us int. Great. So this is kind of nested structure as we have shown here. It's a nested structure. And we can also use our float to switch to convert three, four, five or integer into float. We can see float right and float three four five we can see um float had switched uh convert three four five the integer number into three uh four five point zero of float number it added a, a zero uh, behind the integer number so this is the uh, practice for int and float if you still feel confused about uh, this point, we can talk, uh, we can do more practice on Monday's lab. And also you can go to my office hour to um, do a more practice and I will help you to understand uh, how to uh, convert between the data types. Next, let me introduce the variable formatting in Python. In Python, we have already know that we can use a print function to output information to the console. And if we want to output the text along with data, we can use formatting operators. The formatting operators um, are, uh, start with a percent sign. The percent sign is called the formatting operator, which used to handle the uh, formats in strings. A string um, containing the um, percent sign is called a formatted string, and the percent sign is used to con uh, use the in conjunction with different characters for different data types. For string data types, uh, we can uh, follow by a, a S, and for the integer, uh, we can follow by um, D. And here, uh, D is assigned a decimal integer. We will talk about uh, the integer range later. And uh, if we add some numbers like 0, 06 here, it means the integer is deep spread with a specified with uh, 6. Well, we can change 6 to other numbers. So uh, with the leading 0, with leading 0 to fill in any gaps. And uh, um, for floating point number, we can uh, use a percent sign followed by F. Uh, this, in this example, uh, percent dot three F means to display the floating point number with three decimal places. If we, we want to uh, uh, change to six, it will be um, display the floating point number with six decimal places. And we, if we want to just output the percent sign, we can uh, add a percent sign followed by the another percent sign. So the format is print and with some string uh, inside and with a percent sign, uh, then uh, followed by the variables. Uh, this practice uh, some uh, questions of First question is to define a string variable name and output my name uh, is really nice to meet you. And the code will be look like this. Um, we can see the name is a string. So we uh, will use a percent sign followed by S and, uh, and put the variable um, uh, followed uh, a percent sign. For, and the second is define an um, integer variable, a student number or student ID. 
um, we can change this to ID. So, so for a student ID and uh, the code is my student ID number is uh, percent 06 D. D is uh, for integer and six is uh, to have a um, six width for the numbers. And if we don't have that much number uh, or will be filled with zero for the gaps. The third um, um, practice is to define a float variable and which is our example of um, purchasing the cherry and uh, the cherry um, price and uh, is a float number, purchase pounds float number and uh, the payment is also a flow number and we can put them together with uh, wrapped by bracket brackets and uh, the two means displays the floating number with the two decimal places and the first question is to define a float variable um, proportion and uh, <clears throat> output the data portion uh, proportion is 20% and the format, the code is, the data proportion is, we need to enter a uh, number of float number and also the um, 2% to output 1% uh, for the, um, uh, for the proportion. This practice uh, from PyCharm and let me move the nodes to the left. And first, let me um, create a little Python file, name variable basic, because it's too long, the name, zero six um, formatting, variable format, format, okay. Now, first I define a string variable name. Let me move the code here. It's a sharp sign. To show their comments and their synchronized comments. Let me give some space for each question and define a string variable. Let me move here and first we don't need to. Let me close them by right click. Close other tabs or close the tab to the left. Then we can only have uh, this number six format, uh, Python, some file left. And uh, define a variable name equals to Lily. And then print, let's copy the code here. Print, uh, my name is Lily. Uh, we need to pay attention about the double quotes. We have a, we need to change into this format. And uh, my name is um, Lily will be show here. This if we print and right click, let's see, my name is Lily. So this is how we use um, percent size with S to uh, uh, get the string of our variable. Our second exercise is to define an integer variable student ID and output um, like this. And uh, this first define an integer named student ID. ID and equals to, for example, x to one. 
and this print this code here and also we need to um, pay attention about the double quotes for English format about the double quotes then Let's see uh, what will happen here. This one, my student ID is um, percent and 060. We can see uh, my student uh, ID number is uh, G001. And uh, uh, if we change six to five, what we'll see, we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So if we change to uh, five, for example, two, we will have only one uh, field for the gap. It means the width for the uh, number should be two. Uh, if we don't have uh, enough number for the input, uh, for the variable's uh, value, we will uh, have uh, several zeros in front of uh, two to fill up. If I uh, change this to one, two, three, and it will uh, be more than two numbers, right, for the uh, width. So let's see what will happen. It will uh, um, output all the values for the variables. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then it will output all the values here. That's how we use uh, this uh, width for helping us to, uh, um, to fill up the gaps for specified width. If it's output uh, the maximum number of this then it will print all the four number we have uh, assigned for the value. Next, this um, define the um, float uh, variable for price, weight, and payment. Price equals to 5.5 5 .5 and weight equals to 7.5 and the payment equals to price times weight. Then they are all float number. Uh, this again, the same problem for this double quotes. And we need to pay attention about the format. Uh, here zero two again, uh, dot uh, five. Uh, means display the floating point number within uh, three. If two means two decimal uh, places. Let me uh, right click to see the, uh, the ch cherry price is five zero, which is only uh, for two decimal numbers after the. Uh, point, point side right, and if I change to three, and and change it to four, without a zero, let's see what we, we can see we have three, after the uh, person sign, and we have four after the person person um, person sign yeah, um. Point sign. Let's practice the uh, fourth question. To define a float variable um, proportion and output a data proportion. Um, okay, let's define a variable proportion. Proportion equals to um, for example, 20, 
and uh, let's print here. Fix a double quote again. And uh, uh, this first delete this 100. Uh, and uh, we can see we have a, a double um, percent sign here. Then um, if if the double um if two percent size are put together it will output one percent so we will output this percent here and if we want to output 20 um so we will see 20 percent will be output with uh two uh zeros here Great, the data uh, it has been uh, printed. But if I uh, write the proportion as to 0 0.2, we can times 100. We need to pay attention. If we uh, type this 100 here, it means it will um, output all everything here for 100 times. For example, if I change to 10 and rerun, Let's run it. We will see we have this sentence output 10 times. That's why we need to use our brackets for help. 100. And this we do rerun. And we get the same um, result, right? If we want to add something here. Then we will get a period um, number here, uh, a sign here. Great. So let's continue to do more exercises. Um, this for this exercises we have these uh requirements to prompt the user enter their name, complaint, title, and email address. Uh, in a sequence through the console, then output the following format. We will output it like this. To implement the code, uh, this first copy, uh, first create a new Python file named, uh, let's see, a personal business card. Then we can Basic uh, variable basics. Variable basics. Zero seven practice and business card. And then this comments the block blocks. For everything inside here, and the first we can copy the code here, so we can save time for typing, and we need to replace. Let's see uh, if we can. Replace everything. Let me replace here. And replace all. Oh, we can we have replaced another half. It's control just control and C. And use command shift and R, and we can replace by eight. Okay.
replace all, replaced. So we don't have the uh, curly bracket to show in. So I will show you the shortcut next time. If you want to um, change the um, double quote sign uh, to the right format, use command because I'm using a uh, MacBook. So it's command, but if you URA is control and shift and R, then you will uh, get the replace. Replace all the um double quotes into the right format. Okay, so we have named um the um we have uh, several variables name, complaint, title, and phone input. Uh, an email uh, by input with uh, some prompts, right? Enter the name and the complaint and the title and phone number, and uh, then um we uh, print the stars for fifty times, and print the complaint information and add one more uh, print here to add a space uh, between the company and the name and uh, then print our name and title by the format of uh, uh, S. We need to add one more um, thing here and a comma here and we can delete the um, bracket or not or keep it then we can delete it. Name, title. Then next, this uh, add one more space by print and nothing here, right? Add one more space between the name and the phone. Then email, um, the, they are all strings. So we use um, percent side plus S. And then last, we have another uh, 50 um, stars. Let's run the code and to check the result. First, it's asking me to enter the name, enter my name and my company OU. And it's the title, instructor. And my phone number, 222-666. Six six eight nine nine nine. My email address. And uh, the result will be printed uh, in the console. Let's move it um, a little bit up. Okay, we can see I have printed uh, um, my information here, my complaint and name and position, phone number, email, and also uh, 50 uh, stars. Uh, it's a head bar and the uh, um, end bar. Great. So next this law, um, the variable naming principles. And uh, first, so uh, this law about the identifier and the keywords. Second, there's not the rules for variable naming. So what's the identifier? Identifier are the variable names and function names identified by uh, programmers. And uh, there are the variable names. The names should have a clear and meaningful and useful uh, effect uh, to enhance the, the readability and to help people to understand so we can name it uh, like uh, very hard uh, to know, very difficult to know what what um, we want to do for others to guess, right? It's about too convenient. Uh, the third uh, rule is to identify can only consist of the um, 
alphabet and uh, also the numbers like uh, letters from A to Z and numbers zero to nine. I like this to combine the A to Z and the zero to nine together. And also uh, we can only have underscore and we cannot have other uh, signs like a sharp sign or uh, like other edge sign, a dollar sign. First is uh, the identifier can start with a digital number. So we can use a digital number, but it, we cannot start with a digital number and we cannot contain any space in between. And uh, we cannot use the keyword as identifier. And now this uh, do some questions here uh, to check which of the following identifier are correct, uh, correct uh, what, which are not. And the first one uh, is from number 12. Uh, it's content with uh, letters, numbers, and uh, didn't start with numbers. So this is correct. And uh, let's see uh, the second one. From, we have a sharp sign, so it's not. Let's check uh, X with a red X. Okay, this is not. And my bunny, we have underscore sign in between and it's correct, yes. And this my bunny, we have a minus sign, right? A hyphen in between is incorrect. OBG2, uh, yes. And uh, second, no, start with two, incorrect. And let me go to my int, yes. And uh, uh, next is uh, my dot uh, dash underscore T E X T, yes, correct. Start with underscore test, correct. And uh, we have our, no, this is not wrong. And uh, we have uh, um, brackets, this is wrong. And uh, next, flower rose, this is right. Now we have a special sign, so this is wrong. G-O-I, yes. G dot U dot I, no. So, so uh, we can only have letters, um, numbers, and underscores, and it cannot start with numbers. So it's very easy for us to um, check this, right? Next, this not about what uh, keywords. Keywords are identifiers already used uh, in Torale in Python. So they have been used inside the Python system. So we cannot use them as uh, our variable name. Uh, keywords have special functions and meanings. And the developers are not allowed to uh, define the identifiers with the same name as keyword. And we can use the keyword in Python using um, the foreign command to use import key, then type keyword and we'll print keyword uh, dot uh, kw list to see the, all the keywords here. These are the keywords. We don't need to remember all of them. We will get familiar with them as we uh, learn uh, the later courses and we will continue to introduce them as well. The import here is a keyword that can be used to import a toolbox. I import the toolbox of a keyword and the different toolbox in Python provide, provide different tools. So let's go to Ubuntu uh, to um, practice the keywords to import the uh, tools. First, let me move the nodes to the left and uh, type import keywords um keyword here we can see import is a keyword so we cannot uh, use it for identify our variable name and print the keyword uh, kw list then we can see 
uh, the keywords have been printed here, right? Great. Um, next, uh, let's go to go back to our notes to know the rules for variable naming. The naming conventions can be a thing as a kind of convention and a lot absolutely were uh, mandatory. The purpose is to increase the code recognition and readability. And uh, um, the conventions, remember we have a talk about the um, PEP8, which is a style guide for Python code formatting. If we click it, it we will see all kinds of uh, naming rules, naming conventions here. And we can check all of them and uh, uh, identify uh, about uh, uh, variables. So we can check all uh, kinds of variable uh, naming conventions. Let's go back to our notes. And uh, we can uh, see the table is coming from the uh, this um, PP8 uh, format uh, um, website. And uh, this web, uh, it shows the, for the web variable names. We can use a uh, lowercase single letter uh, word or words, use um, underscores to separate the words as well. Um, like our variable um, for, for um, this is an example. And let's go back here. We have a, a note here. The identifier in Python are very case sensitive. So Alex doesn't um, equals to uh, lowercase Alex with a capitalized A. And when defining the variables, it's recommended to keep one space on each side of the equal sign um, to uh, ensure the code format. And it, also in Python, if a variable name consists of two or more words, we can name it in the following way. Uh, for each word is in lowercase, and the words are connected by an um, uh, underscore. Uh, for example, first underscore name, last underscore name, discord underscore uh, username. There shouldn't be a space in between, okay? and a discord underscore pass password uh, word, which we have practiced before with this uh, username. And we can also um, obey the camel case naming rule. When a variable name consists of two or more words, uh, we can use uh, the lower camel uh, case naming rule or upper uh, camel uh, cast name rule. Uh, let's do it. And so we can see the camel is here. And for the um, lower camel cast name, um, it's like first name. We can use N um, as a, a um, top. Then the side are lower. The first word starts with a lower letter, and the first letter of each subsequent word is capitalized. Um, next for the upper camel case naming, the first letter of each word is capitalized, and uh, for uh, for example, like here, uh, first name, last name, L and N are capitalized. So C is capitalized, camel cast capitalized, like these two camels. Great. So this concludes about our uh, naming rules for the identifier 